Thanks, Vicki, for sharing your garden with us. And right now, we're going to get a little buzz. Bee-wise, I mean. <laughs> we have Tanya Phillips joining us right now. Tanya is with the Travis County Beekeepers Association, and we're going to be talking about the things that anybody who's con contemplating keeping bees needs to know. But let's start off by talking about the bee phenomenon. Now, right now, I understand that there's a lot of interest in, in uh, maintaining and keeping bees. Sure. Everybody has had, has heard about, you know, CCD, colony collapse disorder, mm -hmm. and the problems that the bees are having. And so I get a lot of calls just saying, you know, how are the bees doing? We just want to check in. What can we do to help? You know, right. can I plant flowers for them? Oh, that's neat. Yeah. Well, people are concerned. Yes. And uh, actually, beekeeping can be a very good thing for bee populations. Yes, it is, because... In the uh, bee world where the bees are having the problem, mm -hmm. most of it is the commercial beekeepers where they're moving the bees like to almond pollination, mm -hmm. which is happening right now in California. Right. They're moving the bees across the country and it's very stressful for bees and that stress adds to colony collapse. Uh, so uh, just having little small colonies spread out with this dispersed around the nation that aren't being shipped around to, exactly. uh, to pollinate things it makes a big difference yes so let's let's think let's, for those people who are considering the the possibility of having a colony or two in their backyards mm -hmm. let's talk about some of the the the, uh, the big things they need to contemplate first off uh, there are actually regulations about keeping bees right exactly so you need to check with your homeowners association you need to know your city laws in uh, mm -hmm. austin you are allowed to have two colonies actually two colonies and a nuke which is kind of like three colonies okay. but <laughs> it's two colonies mm -hmm. you need to have a fly barrier of six feet high between you and your neighbor the hive should be 10 feet off the property line so there's okay. a few little rules a little, but those don't yeah. sound onerous at all. Nothing no. that would really slow somebody's determined down. Well, now, mm -hmm. uh, it is a uh, something that you need to kind of be educated about, right? This is another uh, one of the tips: is you really should be serious about learning about the bees because if not, you could have very unhappy consequences. Exactly. I, I recommend either joining, you know, a local organization mm -hmm. like the Travis County Beekeepers. Uh, taking a class or two, a hands-on class would be good, and doing some research. Just be careful, not everything you read on the internet is true. So. Mm -hmm. <gasps> You're kidding me. <laughs> right? <laughs> There's actually false information on the internet? Go yes. figure. Mm -hmm. um, so w location is important in the yard, right? I yes. mean, let's talk a little bit about that, because there, be, there would be some locations that just wouldn't work at all, right? Yeah, maybe not not at all. I mean, mm -hmm. you wouldn't want the bees someplace where they'd be in danger of flooding or something like that. Okay. But in general, you want them in the area of yard that would be mo mostly sunny all day. Okay. Maybe a little bit of shade late afternoon. It is hot here. Right. Um, and then you want the hives, the direction of the port they fly in and out of, you want that to be facing east or south or somewhere in between. Mm-hmm. Why that? That way the sun comes up. Uh, shines on the hive, bees uh, go right to work. Oh, okay. Right. Wake yeah. them up. Yes, exactly. <laughs> here's here's yes. your alarm clock. Go yes. get to work. Bees don't fly when it's dark. So. Now, um, are there types of bees that people can have? Or well, there are about a thousand different species of bees here in Texas. A thousand? Yes, but of wow. those, only a few are actually the honeybee species okay. that collects honey. So um, we don't want the wild bees necessarily. You can do things to promote those in your yard too, but what we're talking about is keeping honeybees. So for honeybees, there's only a few different kinds you can get, and pretty much you're going to be stuck with what, you're, what you can get and what you can drive to go pick up. Okay. So. All right. Well, you, you talked about the beekeeping groups. Now tell me about the kinds of activities that take place within the groups. They, um, ev they usually have monthly meetings, mm -hmm. and uh, there'll be some sort of an education component happening, so we usually time it to work just before that season is starting in beekeeping, mm -hmm. so it's very appropriately timed. Sometimes they bring in guest speakers, and another big part of it is they share resources. So if there's a shared library or a shared extractor or something mm -hmm. like that, that really helps. Okay, mm -hmm. and I guess you get tips on what kind of gear to get as well, and then you've brought along a little bit bit of gear. Here's yeah. a smoker, right? Yes. Yeah. And uh, the smokers are, everybody yeah. has seen pictures of smoke. How does that actually work in terms of calming the bees down? 
Well, so you don't, so bees don't like smoke. Okay. Okay, so it isn't that it calms them down so much. It's more as a herding tool. Ah, so okay. you're kind of putting the smoke where you don't want bees to be. Mm -hmm. So if you want them to go back into the hive and you spray a little bit of smoke there, the bees will go down back into the hive. Uh, okay, okay, mm -hmm. that, that makes a lot of sense. And do, these are for cleaning the, uh, the... This is when, really when I think of it, mm -hmm. is when my smoker goes out uh -huh. and I don't have the ability to get it fueled <laughs> really quickly, you can kind of sweep the bees away from the oh, area okay. that you're trying to clear. Okay. And this is for prying the, 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 the wood boxes apart. Okay, okay, very simple. Mm -hmm. Well, those are some of the, the different things you need, but a good bee suit is another thing. and. Uh, we have the, the headdress here, and yep. you know, I've always been curious about these things, so, so I'm gonna actually... I think you'll be on. safe, there you go. <laughs> it looks perfect. Central Texas gardener first, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like an, a pilgrim from Mars. <laughs> well, you know. Yeah, that's, that's kind of just your basic simple veil. It's actually uh -huh. one of the favorites of the students in my classes. Uh -huh. They really like to just put a veil on over their regular clothes mm -hmm. and... Not, you know, it's hot here in Texas to put a whole bee suit on. And the, and the material protects you from the stings, is that right? Yes, just getting extra layers in between you and bees is always a good thing. Okay, so a good bee hat, bee, bee suit, these are all important things. Gloves. Gloves, mm -hmm. right, yeah. so there is there is kind of some regalia you should have. Yes. Now what about actually the hives themselves? Uh, I, you know, I see I drive around the country and I see the, the box kinds of hives. Mm -hmm. Is that the standard thing that most people use? Yeah, the standard uh, style hive is called a Langstroth hive. And that is your square box, 19 inches long, mm -hmm. you know, and they can, they can vary between eight frame or 10 frame, but that's the standard. I also like top bar hives, which is a little bit different. That's what this comb is right here. Uh -huh. And in a top bar hive, you just put the bar in, which goes across the top. Right. And then when you put that in there and the bees come in, they build all of this naturally. Mm -hmm. So the bees can Build their comb naturally. You don't right. have to buy frames. You don't have to build frames, and you don't have to lift boxes right. in the top bar hive. Well, I can see that this has been used, and uh, you know how much honey uh, can be produced in, from a single colony or single hive. Well, here in Central Texas, we average somewhere between probably 30 and 50 pounds. Wow. And that's what they collect during the spring, and then we take it in the summer. Well, what is a homeowner? I know I, I, I love honey. I eat it every single day on my toast, Good. but uh, 50 pounds is a lot. <laughs> yeah, well, it, so you know, people, uh, it's about three to five pounds per comb. And so. so people share that and give it away and actually, I'm, I'm assuming there's a market for that as well. Absolutely, yeah, we sell it. We have it in uh, mm -hmm. liquid honey and we also sell the comb honey. Right. Which reminds people of the old, good old days when they used to eat comb honey. Mm. Well, I, li I like the comb honey very much. Spread mm -hmm. it on the, the, the bread, it's just absolutely delicious. Exactly, and cheese plates in restaurants now, a lot of them will have comb oh, that's honey. that's right, that's mm -hmm. right. Well, you know, one thing is on the ordering of the bees, the mm -hmm. timing is really important, and you were just referencing that you, you, you expect delivery of the bees in spring, but you have to, you order yours much earlier. Yeah, we order typically sometime in the fall, starting around October, uh, whenever all the bee sellers advertise it, basically. But mm -hmm. uh, the problem is, is there is still somewhat of a shortage when you're going to buy good quality bees, and so they sell out every year. All the breeders sell out. So you wanna order, especially in the fall, to get them earliest possible delivery in the spring. Okay. Which so, is usually April. So uh, April is about the time you start, so things mm -hmm. have already warmed up here mm -hmm. pretty well. So, and that's important, I'm assuming. for. The yeah, absolutely. The bees, you know, they want it to be pretty much over 60 or 70 degrees to to really start brooding up and making babies. Well, they've come to the right place here in Austin if they want it mm -hmm. over 60 Yeah, bees degrees. do great here, bees do great. That's great. Mm -hmm. Well, Tanya, I know that um, people can be in touch with you uh, via the mm -hmm. Beekeeping Association, so that's yes. awesome. Yep. We really appreciate you taking the time to be a part of the show, and we hope that a lot of the viewers out there will get busy as a bee and yes. uh, help out these critters that really make such a huge impact on mankind. So, That's it. Thank Alan, you. Tanya, thank you so much. And coming up next is our friend Daphne. Mm -hmm.